Welcome to the Intuitive Hour with psychic medium, author, and intuitive life coach, Michelle Beltran. The Intuitive Hour will empower you to learn how to magnify your intuitive voice. Listen in and expand your understanding of what it means to be psychic and how to awaken, amplify, and trust your inner voice. Greetings to you. Thank you for being with me here today. You are listening to the Intuitive Hour, Awaken Your Inner Voice, and I'm your host, Michelle Beltran. We meet every week here discussing all matters of metaphysical, psychic development, intuition, and so much more. It's an honor to have you here, and thank you for being with me. All right, last week... Our episode offered 11 tips for you as you are in a supportive psychic reading, life coaching, consulting, counseling space. In this episode, I'd like to dive just a little bit deeper into the anatomy of a reading and be a little bit more specific about two things, how to begin a reading and how to conclude one. All right, so many of you who are listening today are already providing readings and or intuitive coaching of some kind to others, and if you're not, you might have a strong lean or desire or penchant for this. So today's uh, episode is all about uh, specifics regarding how to get started in the session and then how to end a session. Keep in mind, this is a checklist of what I use. As you grow and develop, you'll create your own. All right, so beginning here. Number one, as you prepare for a session with someone, be it psychic, life coaching, consulting, counseling, or perhaps just lending an ear to a friend, consider a brief meditation to put yourself in the proper frame of mind. I would encourage calming music. I highly recommend the uh, hemisync music, which will enhance the deep opening of the delta waves, which are directly responsible and work on that level of psychic Uh, psychic work and right brain uh, functioning. They'll open up that aspect of your brain to help you really access meaningful, clear, accurate images and impressions that take you down into that deeper layers of a subconscious self. Again, that is hemisync music, and that is spelled H-E-M-I-S-Y-N-C. I would suggest the Monroe Institute for music of this nature. Number two, be in a calm and open mental space. By this, I mean be expectation free, be light, be easy, uh, be fun. These sessions and working with others, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that you're having fun. If they become heavy or burdensome, that's the time to take a break. Further, while you're in this space of calm and open mentalness, be available to receive what is meant with no preconceived notions and not seeking to find accuracy or rightness, but letting that just blossom, letting that be, and even maybe letting that find you. So you can sit back and relax and just let this arise. Number three, as I'm preparing for a session, uh, one of the things that's very essential for me is to sit uh, with my bare feet flat on the ground, sit in a comfortable chair, palms facing up in a position of receptivity, very upright, meeting this time and moment with care and grace and dignity. It's an honor to be walking alongside those who have come to you, who have come to us. And so we want to meet this moment with that same level of dignity. All right, number four. 
stating a prayer of protection, grounding, running energy, and being in neutrality. Being in neutrality means being in the center of your head, where you are neutral and not influenced by emotion. Now, grounding, running energy, and neutrality uh, have episodes that I have created here on the Intuitive Hour that you can go listen to. Um, they're very specific specific episodes discussing how to go about each of these. So I won't go into detail about those now. What I do want to expand on is the prayer of protection. This is essential and you will want to take time to create that on your own if you don't have a prayer. Also, and in fact, we'll take a moment now. I'd like to go ahead and share with you my prayer. You can create your own or use this, but it is something of importance. You want to make sure that you incorporate before you are in any session uh, with any client. All right. My prayer is this. Supreme Being, all that is. Thank you for this opportunity to complete the Psychic Medium Reading with Joe. May it be guided by your love and light. Surround us with your golden divine energy and only the most purest, positive, highest essence is allowed in this reading space. Teachers, angels, spirit guides, masters, ascended masters, thank you all for coming. I intend accurate, open, clear lines of communication. Amen. All right. So now be sure to take time to create your own prayer. All right, the next thing that I do as I begin to step into a session, I'm aware of my body, and you want to be as well. Most specifically, pay attention to your senses. Set an intention to link with each sense, sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. And in fact, since your senses are the seat of the reading and through which messages will come, you want to take a moment to go to each sense before you begin. Meaning, say hello to the sense of sight and take your attention to your third eye right above your eyes in the center of your brow, in the center of your forehead. And imagine that third eye. See it getting bigger and bigger. Then go to your nose, your sense of smell. Be present there for a few moments and watch as your nose gets bigger. Perhaps you, perhaps you then take a whiff of the air. We can do that together now. The same thing with taste. Go to your mouth. Give attention there. See as your lips and your tongue get bigger and bigger. In so doing, you are giving honor and attention to these areas and they wake up. We want them to be ready and alert. So go through each of your senses and do the same. One extra little tidbit I would like to add right here, as you're centering and becoming ready for your session, invite the higher realms to come down to you. Ask them to lower their vibration. You might even imagine that they come close to you above your head in a divine golden bubble space, and then you rise and meet them there. You convene in this special place. Just a nice little tip to help you focus even more as you're moving into this very heightened space. 
All right, number six, uh, accessing your reading screen. This too, uh, I have created a specific episode at the Intuitive Hour. Please do take some time to review that for specific details about the reading screen, but this is indeed a moment when you want to call that forward as part of your checklist. Bring that reading screen forward. This is where images and impressions will be shown. Many of you like to use this tool. A reading screen is essentially a place to capture. It's much like a movie screen would be to capture images and impressions. Be sure that you invite this reading screen forward as part of your preparation. And finally, make sure you have a quiet space to perform this reading in. Uh, Pets and children are not allowed. We love them dearly, but this is not a space for them. They too have energy, and they absolutely can affect the processes of a reading space. All right, so your homework is to create a brief checklist for preparing your reading space. Ask yourself how you want to create your quiet space with little or no interruptions. You may add all of the list we've just discussed and or additional items that you want to uh, contribute to it. All right, moving on to concluding a reading. This can sometimes be a little bit difficult. You will find that your clients may not want to let go. They want to keep asking questions or to get more information. You might find they feel sad or even angry that a uh, a specific bit of information didn't come in or something that did came in that created a little bit of emotion. They might even get upset at the information from time to time. I don't typically see this, but that can happen. So learning to generously give of yourself and then kindly and professionally ask that your boundaries be respected is a skill that you want to develop. For example, it's important to be sure to inform your clients about the duration of the reading and how and when the reading will end. We talked about this a little bit in our previous episode. Also, you want to be sure to conclude a reading with a thank you, acknowledging your spirit guides as well as the clients, uh, as well as the client themselves for being present. Uh, Every reading is a gift for both the client and the readie or the reader. And so there's a thanks exchange for everyone involved. You want to be sure to give the client a minute or two to sit, think, contemplate, meditate briefly, and talk to you about what they've experienced, if there's any clarity they need. As you begin to wind down in your session, you might ask, is there any final clarity, any final question you do have, and come to a nice gradual closure. In this way, you're going to assist your client in processing information, especially information that they may be unclear about or couldn't confirm during the session. You might also give them a brief process for connecting again on their own away from the session with their own inner guides or spirit if it was a medium session. Be sure to summarize the session and remind them of any signals or symbols or dates or uh, times or uh, information about what was ahead that was received that you can give to them. Okay, for concluding a reading, your homework for the week is to consider as you go through your day uh, making mental notes of how well you set and keep boundaries in your relationships. We're going to start setting boundaries now in life, daily, before you get to a session with a client. Look especially for places in your relationships where you may be allowing others to cross your personal boundaries of time, space, respect, or otherwise. Also, make note of your impressions and think about ways you can begin to set and maintain clear boundaries. Be mindful that you can set boundaries with care, grace, and love. 
Setting boundaries is an act of self-love, remember, and in addition, you're teaching others to do the same. So practicing this will assist you when you're facing situations within a reading where you may need to be firm. Also, make a brief outline of the conclusion points most important to you in a session and practice this with a friend or client. All right, everyone, we're going to conclude this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. The Anatomy of a Reading, How to Begin and End Your Session. All right, thank you for being here. I look forward to meeting you again next Monday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks for listening to the Intuitive Hour with Michelle Beltran. If you like what you heard, please share our podcast with a friend and be sure to visit michellebeltran.com to get Michelle's popular Develop Your Clairvoyance ebook.